very pleased to be here. And uh, let's see if we can advance our slides. There we go. I really look forward to talking to you all about uh, diamond saw cut surface textures. You know, in the not so distant past, ride quality, noise, and customer comfort took a back seat to, to structural considerations. But increasingly, specifiers are utilizing diamond saw cut surfaces to reduce roughness, reduce noise, and increase friction on their pavements, bridges, and runways. And there's a number of reasons for that. It's economical, it's long lasting, it uh, makes it easier to, to handle heavily phased projects, and it's environmentally friendly as well. There's three textures in particular I want to touch on today. The first of which is going to be uh, diamond grinding. Secondly, we'll talk about safety grooving. And then we'll wrap up talking about the next generation concrete surface. So let's start with the basics. What is diamond grinding? Diamond grinding is the removal of a thin surface layer of hardened concrete using closely spaced diamond saw blades. It results in a smooth, level, and uh, pavement surface, and it provides a longitudinal line type texture with desirable friction and low noise characteristics. And it's frequently performed with other concrete pavement preservation treatments, such as full and partial depth repair, undersealing, valvar retrofit, and joint resealing, as well as a, a final surface texture on new pavement, as uh, Tim had just mentioned. Here's the business end of the operation. On the upper left side of the, the uh, picture, you'll see a diamond tip saw blade. And in the foreground, you'll see what we call as a spacer. And these blades and spacers are then stacked on an arbor, alternating one after the other. Uh, and that comprises our diamond grinding cutting head. And then that cutting head is attached to a machine such as this. This is a Diamond Products PC6000 diamond grinder. It's the most common and the largest diamond grinding machine available in the world. And uh, here's what the texture looks like. Uh, as mentioned, it's longitudinal in orientation. It um, very much looks like corduroy fabric. And if you look at the bottom part of the slide, you can see a cross section, which shows that the texture is comprised of eighth inch wide grooves, 125 thousandths that is. And uh, the, the, the spacers will vary depending upon the aggregate hardness. The harder the aggregate, the tighter, we will space those blades together. The softer the aggregate, the wider we will uh, place those uh, spacers between the blades. Now, diamond grinding is unlike milling. Milling is an operation that requires impact to chip away the surface of the, of the pavement. On the left, you have a, a micro mill surface, which has a, a finer texture. And on the right, you have a, a standard milling uh, texture that would be used perhaps in advance of a uh, asphalt overlay. But no matter what configuration you have, if you're using milling, milling is using carbide teeth cast at such a speed with such a force that it overcomes the compressive strength of the surface of the concrete and thereby chips away that concrete. Unlike diamond grinding, which uses abrasion to remove the concrete surface. The uh, diamond saw blades are comprised of a core and on the outside of that core is a segment which contains thousands upon thousands of synthetic diamonds that are cast in a metallurgical powder, put in a mold and subjected to, to high heat and pressure. Uh, that creates our segment. And then that segment is laser welded to the core and allows us to abrade away the concrete very much like using sandpaper on a piece of lumber rather than a chisel, which would be more akin to the, the, the milling operation. There's a lot of advantages to using saw cut textures. First of all, uh, diamond grinding and, and other saw cut textures are substantially less in cost than asphalt overlays. When you uh, grind, you're going to end up with a, a better surface friction and, and safety, and the, the uh, saw cut servicing can be accomplished during off-peak hours with short lane closures. You're not worrying about anything to uh, cure or to, to cool. Once the machine leaves the pavement, traffic is allowed back on immediately. Uh, saw cut texturing doesn't require grinding of the, the uh, adjacent lane or the shoulder if uh, it need not be. So you could focus those scarce dollars that you have on the lane that requires the attention. It does not affect overhead clearances or bridges or signs or tunnels because we're not really adding anything to the pavement. Uh, matter of fact, we're just going to remove a little bit. We're going to refinish the pavement that we already have had there. Maybe it's 10 days old, or maybe it's 10 years old, or maybe it's 50 years old, but all we're going to do is resurface it. So that's why it's so environmentally friendly. 
We're not looking to take any uh, resources from the environment. We're not looking for any additional aggregates or, or anything of the like. Uh, simply, we're gonna just refinish what we have. There's a lot of problems that can be addressed using diamond saw cut textures, uh, certainly faulting at joints and cracks, built-in or construction roughness. It certainly makes multiple placements in those heavily phased projects much easier to deal with and providing us with a much smoother end product. It increases macro texture, friction, and thereby safety, can remove wheel path rutting and other geometric issues such as uh, poor transverse slope, curl, and or warp. And uh, it also reduces tire pavement noise levels. Faulting is the reason that uh, grinding came into, into uh, existence. And it was first used in California back in the mid 1960s on a section of I-10 where they had some significant faulting. And as you can see in the picture here, a single pass of diamond grinding can remove a three quarter inch fault uh, with, with ease. Here we have a graphic uh, showing the smoothness of Interstate 635 that runs through Dallas. And uh, the red line is the, the, the uh, roughness prior to grinding. And you can see there are peaks that are as rough as 230 inches per mile IRI. In the green, we have the after grinding profile. And you can see with a single pass of the diamond grinding operation, there was no repair for potholes, for spoiled joints, repaired, uh, replaced slabs or anything, simply a diamond grinding job. The, uh, the smoothness or the roughness, I should say, went from over 150 inches per mile average down to approximately 60 inches per mile. Single pass of diamond grinding. The cost of the diamond grinding at that time was under $3 per square yard. Diamond saw cut textures are also very, very safe. The increased macro texture of the diamond ground pavement surface provides for improved drainage at the water tire pavement interface, or I should say improved drainage of water at the tire pavement interface. The longitudinal texture provides directional stability, reduces hydroplaning, essentially through side force friction. The grooves provide an escape route for the water trapped between the tire and the pavement surface. In Wisconsin, the Wisconsin DOT and Marquette University did a study where they found that Overall accident rates for ground surfaces were 40% less than for unground surfaces over a six year period, 57% in wet weather conditions. And that's not the only study. We'll talk about another one in just a few minutes. The other thing is, as I mentioned, environmentally friendly, we know that we'll have lower ambient temperatures and energy costs because the light reflective color of concrete means less energy is required for overhead lighting and cooling in urban areas. Now let's take a few minutes and talk about safety grooving. Safety grooving like diamond grinding is a procedure that utilizes diamond tip saw blades mounted on a horizontal shaft that cuts channels through which the water can drain from the pavement surface. Roadway is paved, uh, is grooved very much in the same way that you diamond grind a road except that the blades are spaced further apart in a grooving operation. And I think this graphic uh, explains it much better as we had talked about previously in the, in the top part of this slide, you see what the cross section of a diamond ground section looks like. Essentially what we're looking to do is put the blades close enough together so that we can impact the smoothness of the overall pavement surface. Whereas in diamond grooving, we're not looking to impact the smoothness or reduce the roughness of a pavement. We're simply looking to increase the amount of macro texture. So in a grooving operation, we'll use the same 125,000 wide blade eighth inch wide blade, but we'll space those blades approximately three quarters of an inch on center apart, thereby increasing the macro texture, but not impacting smoothness in any way. And here is a, uh, a representative diamond grinding, uh, excuse me, diamond grooving head that would be mounted on a grinding machine. Safety grooving can be either or oriented either in a longitudinal, which is the more typical orientation, or transverse orientation. But either which way, you're going to reduce splash and spray, hydroplaning potential, and wet weather accidents up to 70%. I'll talk about that in just one minute. It enhances tire, enhances tire pavement interlock and the uh, lateral stability, as we mentioned just a minute ago. And it costs less than conventional diamond grinding. On average, we could say that safety grooving is about half the cost of conventional grinding. And oftentimes I use that as a, a metric when 
asked, you know, what's this project going to cost? If I know that you have $3 grinding in your neighborhood, given a, a set of uh, conditions, I'm going to assume that the grooving is a, a $1.50. Uh, and again, uh, grooving can be used on all types of pavement, whether it be uh, white or black. As mentioned, there's other research efforts that have taken place over the years, and the California Department of Transportation actually undertook, uh, who's now referenced as uh, Caltrans, undertook a, a very extensive research project where they looked at 750 miles of uh, concrete pavement in the LA basin. And they compared that against control sections and so on and so forth. But over a three year period, they monitored a 20% reduction in total accidents due to longitudinal grooving, a 50% reduction in fatal accidents as compared to the control, and a 70% reduction in wet pavement accidents, all due to safety grooving. And it's sometimes easier to understand it when you look at a graphic such as this. If you look at the, the right side couple, you'll see that there is a, a bar graph showing the skid numbers for both rib tire, which best exemplifies or mimics dry pavement friction, and a smooth tire, which mimics wet pavement conditions. And on the right side, we have a graphic showing before longitudinal grooving. And as you can see, the smooth tire friction numbers, the wet friction numbers, don't look that good. They're nominal at best. But once you apply longitudinal grooving, you can see that it just about doubles that smooth tire friction number. And that is really at the core as to why we have significant reductions in priority incident locations by applying safety grooving. So let's talk a little bit about noise as well. The National Concrete Payment Technology Center, CP Tech Center, undertook a, a very robust study several years ago uh, focused on tire pavement noise. And they went out and measured noise signatures of 1,500 unique sections uh, all across America and in several countries in Europe. And what they determined is, is that diamond grinding is the quietest concrete surface texture commonly used. Uh, of course, the transverse tining would be the loudest, and then in between you have the drag textures and the longitudinal tining. At the same time, we see that Caltrans and the Arizona DOT were also conducting their own testing related to tire pavement noise. And they looked at ground, diamond ground sections, longitudinal tying sections, uniform transverse tines sections, and random transverse tines sections. And of course, the, the diamond ground sections were once again the quietest of all the surfaces tested. But one of the things that caught our attention was the fact that there was nearly three decibels worth of difference between the best and the worst performing diamond ground sections. Why is that? We did have that question and we pursued it with the help of Purdue University at their tire pavement testing center. And we used their TPTA unit to try a number of different uh, surface textures and we measured friction and noise and macro texture and so on. And we ended up coming up with a couple of different uh, variants that we thought had potential. Uh, the, the best of which was the next generation concrete surface, NGCS. And we were lucky enough to partner with the Minnesota DOT who allowed us to use their Min Road pavement testing facility to try several of these sections under real live traffic conditions. And uh, uh, eventually they even allowed us to do a uh, 150,000 square yards on a, a section of I-94 up near Duluth. Uh, that was the first mainline section of NGCS built in the United States and it performed very, very well. Now the NGCS is built using the same equipment, the same blades. It's just a different blade orientation as you see in the bottom right. The NGCS blade configuration can best be described as a combination of conventional diamond grinding with a very, very tight blade spacing and a safety grooving. The differences here are the conventional grind use uh, is very tight. We're using 35,000 spacers instead of 105,000 spacers. And in terms of the grooving, we're tightening up a little bit from the safety grooving aspect where we have the spacing ranging anywhere from a half inch to five eighths of an inch center to center. And there's a close up of the texture. And as you can see, we use the grooves, uh, the, the macro texture for the, the wet weather performance, which works very, very well as recently discussed. 
And the micro texture is more a function of the concrete mix design. So when you build NGCS, you want to make sure that you have a good friction aggregate, a good concrete mix, uh, and so on. And basically the, the friction that you achieve from the day you build it is what you are going to maintain over time. The grooving is not going to disappear. And we're essentially pre-polishing this pavement surface. So if you have good friction numbers the day you build this, the day you construct the NGCS, that's the friction you would expect to maintain throughout the life of the pavement. We were fortunate enough to partner with a, dump, a number of different uh, departments of transportation, KDOT being one of them, and we uh, built several sections on I-70 several years ago. And uh, once again, looking at the sound intensity level, the next generation concrete surface on the far left outperformed all other textures that we were uh, testing in this particular section. In addition to that, we looked at uh, friction. Try to advance the slide here. And you can see here, uh, after six years, this section on I-70 performed as good, if not better collectively than all the other textures over time. So again, a proof of concept uh, continued to uh, provide confidence for us in the NGCS surface. And that makes sense. If you look at the mean texture depths on the far left, you can see that the NGCS section, once again, far and away, had uh, better texture, more texture than the other uh, surface textures tested during that test. And we found this in multiple states under multiple testing uh, regimes with uh, different researchers, different equipment, and so on. Again, the NGCS just outperformed uh, all other textures. There are 14 states that have so far built next generation concrete surface textures. And uh, there have been discussions with uh, Florida DOT personnel to establish a section in state. We look forward to that. In addition to that, uh, we've seen the NGCS built in uh, four countries aside from uh, the United States. And again, as a matter of uh, cost, uh, again, I look at everything as a baseline of, of conventional diamond grinding. If the conventional diamond grinding costs about $3, we would assume that the next generation surface would cost around $6 or so. So about double what the conventional diamond grinding would cost. So in summary, motorists are increasingly demanding safe, smooth, quiet, delay-free roadways. While the funding necessary to meet these needs just remains really, really elusive. The diamond socket textures are a time-proven, cost-effective means of providing a consistently smooth, quiet, and safe texture at a reasonable cost. And millions of square yards of the next generation surface have been constructed in 14 states, four countries, and it is the low noise concrete surface texture designed for high traffic, noise sensitive areas. I know we're really blitzed through that quickly. Uh, hopefully we can address some of your questions at the end of this session, but if not, please feel free to, to join us at IGGA.net anytime, and it'd be our pleasure to, uh, to talk with you about diamond saw cut textures. With that, I thank you very much for your attention.